What is up everyone? Today the battle of the transfers continues with White Toner Prince versus DTF Prince. As you can see, they're two completely different sizes. My White Toner Printer only prints up to 8.5 by 11. I could have printed this in two parts and then pasted them together to make it the same size as this one, but meh. This whole sheet is a 13 by 19, but the image itself is about 14 by I think like 10. In my last transfer comparison video, a lot of people were telling me to use the same image, so I did. The only difference is that I made them a different size because this one I'm going to be wearing constantly because I really like it. And this was just for purposes for the video. One thing to note is that this is not a block image. If you look at the last video, my white toner versus super color, you'll notice that I used one entire solid image. Now I got a lot of comments saying that if I rasterized that image, it would last longer and it would feel better. But to be completely honest with you, I don't like rasterization. I like the big block images. I'm not a fan of the rasterization. I'm not a fan of the holes in the image if they don't have to be there. If it's a large solid print I like a large solid print but I do understand that if you rasterize it lasts longer and it feels a lot better because I have done it I've done it a couple times and it's not for me so what I did for this one is I chose an image that has breaks in it as you can tell there's a bunch of blank space in between all of the toner and ink let's start off with that actually white toner prints are printed using toner while DTF prints are printed using ink both systems use CMYK plus W which stands for cyan magenta yellow black plus white for the white toner print, we're using a Uninet iColor 560. And for the DTF print, we're going to be using a Rico RI1000 DTG printer. Now, I don't have a DTF printer, but the DTG printer can print on DTF film, so you can make transfers. So let's go ahead and start the process for making our white toner print. For this, we're going to need the A sheet, which is this one, the one you print on, and the B sheet. The B sheet is the adhesive. Once we have our A sheet printed, we're going to go ahead and put it on the heat press. Once we have it on the heat press, we're going to put the B sheet right behind it and we're going to press it for about two minutes. Once the time is up, we're going to lift up the heat press, rub a little cloth over the transfer, and then with even pressure, we're going to peel off the B sheet. And that's all there is to making white toner print. Now let's go ahead and see how I printed this DTF transfer. I have my DTF sheet taped onto the platen of my Rico RI1000 DTG printer. And now I'm just going to go ahead and send it to print. It's going to lay down the color first and then it's going to lay down the white ink. Now we're going to put the DTF powder on it. This powder acts as the adhesive between the ink and your garment. Once we make sure that we have the entire image completely powdered up, we're going to go ahead and shake off the excess. And then we're going to place it under the heat press to melt and cure the powder. One very important thing to note here is that you cannot let the platen of your heat press touch the powder itself because it will melt and get all over the top platen of your heat press and make a huge mess. And that's pretty much it. We have our DTF print. As you can see, both transfers use completely different methods to be printed. While the DTF print uses a powder that needs to be baked onto it to be used as the adhesive, the white toner print uses an adhesive sheet, AKA the B sheet, to transfer the adhesive onto the design. So now that we have our transfers made, the next thing we have to do is trim the edges. On a white toner print, it's very important that you trim the edges so that any excess adhesive that's on there doesn't transfer onto your shirt. Now that's not something I've seen a lot of people do using a DTF print, but I'm gonna do it just in case. All right, we have them trimmed down. Let's go ahead and press. So let's go ahead and start with our white toner print. I already have the shirt pre-pressed. We're gonna press it for 20 seconds. Now once we have it pressed, we have to go ahead and move it and let it completely cool down. Now that our white toner print is completely cool to the touch, we're gonna go ahead and peel the carrier. You have to be very careful with this. Make sure to grab it from a corner. And once you have it picked, just go ahead and start rolling it off. There we have it. And there we have our white toner print. Now this is very plasticky. It's not very stretchable like at all. So we have to give it one finishing press. We're gonna press it down for another 10 to 15 seconds. We're gonna go ahead and press our DTF. And we're gonna press that for 20 seconds as well. Now let's let that cool before we peel. The DTF print has had a little bit of time to cool. Let's go ahead and peel it the same way. Let's go ahead and give our DTF a finishing press. Gonna do that for about 10 seconds.
and that's all there is to it. So let's compare. Let me start this off by saying both of these were printed on next level 3600 shirts. Everything about these two prints is the exact same thing except the method they were used to print and the size. Also, I realized after I printed that the DTF, I forgot some error. Let's start off with the pressing. As you saw, they both required a first press as well as a second press. As you saw, they all required a first press as well as a finishing second press. I pressed both of them at 315 degrees. Typically, a white toner, I press at 310, and the DTF is supposed to be between 315 to 320, so I figured 315 for both would work without a problem. The feel. This is the white toner print, and just like all the other white toner prints that I've done before, it feels a little bit papery. That is just what white toner feels like. White toner feels, white toner prints feel a little bit papery. Does it feel bad? No, not at all. I do not think this feels bad whatsoever, but some people might not like it. Some people think, some people might think that it's too thick, that it feels too cheap. I personally don't mind it. I do wear it. I think they look great. The colors look really, really good. Now, if this were to be a full block print, where you don't have these little spaces of just shirt in between, then it would be a lot thicker. It would feel a lot more papery and it wouldn't be as nice. This right now feels really good because of all the breaks in it. Again, going back to rasterization, when you rasterize an image, you add all the little holes or you add lines through the image, which in turn makes it feel better, last longer, etc. But for something like this, you wouldn't really need it because there's already a bunch of breaks in the image. Even the more solid parts, they do feel uh, thicker than the rest of the shirt would but ultimately again it doesn't feel bad I like how it feels but it might not be some people's cup of tea some people just don't like the feel of it and that's okay again personal preference now let's check out the DTF print how does this one feel this feels a lot a lot softer when I say a lot softer I mean the difference is phenomenal I'm not gonna lie the difference between a DTF print and a white toner print when it comes to the feel of the actual shirt it feels a lot nicer. I would compare this to maybe vinyl, maybe not as thick. It doesn't feel like that top layer that you would feel with vinyl. You can tell that there is a top layer, obviously, and it feels like there's a layer on top of it because you can feel the ink, you can feel where the image is, but it's not as thick, it's not as rough. That being said, all the extra little breaks that are in the image itself just make it that much softer. I really like how this feels. This feels really nice. Personally, I do think more people would prefer the feel of a DTF print versus a white toner print. Let's talk about color vibrancy. The vibrancy of the colors of both of these is pretty on par. They're pretty much the same. One thing I will point out is that the white toner print is a bit glossier than the DTF print. The DTF print, when hitting it directly with a light, looks a bit more matte, a bit more flat than the white toner one. The white toner has a little bit more of a shine even after the second press. But then again, remember after we peel the carrier, it's very shiny and very plasticky. So that could be a huge factor onto this. Now, it could also be the type of transfer paper that I used. There's a bunch of different transfer papers that you can try, but I'm using the standard Uninet two-step. Ease of transferring. So a lot of people don't necessarily have a white toner printer or a DTF or a DTG printer. What a lot of people do is they purchase the transfers on something like Etsy. If you're doing that, you don't have to worry about the printing part of it. All you have to worry is about the pressing. Which one would be easier to press? Personally, I think that DTF prints are easier to press. The reason being is because peeling white toner prints can have a little bit of a learning curve. For one, you have to make sure that it is completely cool to the touch before removing the carrier. Another thing is, is when you do remove the carrier, as I mentioned earlier, you have to pick it up from a corner and slowly roll it off. While I did do the same thing for the DTF print, the DTF print came off a lot easier than the white toner. I've had a few instances where the white toner print is still not fully cool to the touch, or my technique is wrong when I'm peeling off the carrier and I end up ripping off part of the image. Now, if you wanna print these transfers on your own, let's talk about one of the biggest factors, price. How much does it cost to get a white toner printer? How much does it cost to get a DTF or DTG printer? There's a huge difference, huge difference. A white toner printer can run you anywhere three to $4,000 and up. That being said, toner itself is pretty expensive. If you have to, for example, replace all the toner cartridges, you're gonna be spending well about a thousand dollars while they do last a long time a thousand dollars is still a lot of money and then on top of that you have to buy the a and b sheets the a and b sheets for a hundred of them could cost anywhere between 200 to about 250 dollars so in consumables white toner is kind of expensive but buying the actual printer isn't necessarily the worst while yeah it is expensive you know you're spending over three thousand dollars it's nothing compared to dtf or dtg if you want to get into dtf printing that's a bit more complicated the white toner printer does not need any maintenance. As long as you leave it on, it'll automatically do all its maintenance. A DTF printer or DTG printer will not do that. 
for the most part. And honestly, if you wanna get a DTF printer in your house, you're gonna be looking at getting a converted one more than likely. The Epson L1800 is pretty much the number one printer that's used to convert to be able to make DTF prints. A DTF printer needs to be maintained daily. You need to clean the heads. You need to make sure they're moist. You pretty much need to be running the printer every single day in order to not dry out the printer heads. So if you don't have the volume to be printing every single day, it might not be worth getting a DTF printer. Now you could do what I did and get a DTG printer like the Ricoh RI1000. What I like about this printer is that you don't have to do maintenance every day. There's a lot of DTG printers out there that you do have to do daily maintenance. For this one, all you have to do every day is a nozzle check and every week you just have to manually clean the heads and then monthly you have to do its own separate maintenance. So what are we talking about in terms of price for a DTF printer or a DTG printer? If we're looking at a converted DTF printer you're gonna be looking I believe between two thousand dollars and up. So you have the printer which is just over two or three thousand dollars then you have to look at the DTF film. The DTF film can vary in price depending on where you get it. I get mine from Heat Transfer Warehouse and that varies in price depending on the size but if we're comparing it to the eight and a half by eleven that we're using for a white toner printer then for 100 eight and a half by eleven DTF sheets it comes out to about $65. Now that's not bad at all. That's less than half of what white toner sheets cost. Ink is also gonna vary depending on where you buy it, but if you decide to purchase it off Heat Transfer Warehouse, the price ranges between $32 to about $41 per bottle depending on the color. Now if you buy all five colors, that's gonna be roughly about 200 bucks, which equals out to almost the price of one toner cartridge of the white toner. But that's not it. Then you also have to buy the DTF powder. Now the DTF powder is still not that bad. It ranges between $25 to about $80, again, depending on the size that you buy. It is a lot cheaper than using white toner. They have different ways to be able to cure the powder. They have some ovens that are special for it that you can keep in your house that you can vent to the outside so all the fumes go out. You can also use your heat press like you saw me do, or you can use just a regular convection oven, which I've seen some other people do. Those are pretty much the home converted options that you can use. Up until now, we've talked about a converted L1800 printer, which ultimately would be a desktop size printer that you would use at home. Now, if you wanna get a legitimate printer, you know, from an actual US brand, you know, something with warranty, with support. If you have any issues, you can call up the company and get some help. Then you're gonna to wanna to be going with the bigger printers. If you wanna get a brand name DTF printer, you're gonna be looking over $20,000. And you're not gonna be printing sheets like this. You're gonna be printing rolls upon rolls. Those printers are not ideal for home use, for one-offs, for birthday shirts for your cousin, or that Etsy order that you get once or twice a week. When it comes to a printer like that, you really need to have the volume in order to get the best bang for your buck. Now what about the second option, DTG printer? DTG printers are great because you can just go ahead and load up the film and print. Then you can do everything as you saw me do it. And if you don't wanna make the transfer, you can print directly onto the garment. But these aren't necessarily meant for DTF printing. Yeah, it works perfectly and you can make your transfers, but it won't be as fast and efficient to print the transfers. Now when you're looking at the price point for a DTG printer, you're still looking at over $15,000. So while yeah, you can get a DTG printer for some like DTF prints. Is it ideal? Not fully, but you can make it work. Washability. White toner, depending on the paper, it could probably last 20, 30 washes, but ultimately it will start to crack. And with big block images, you'll see it start to wrinkle. If printed and pressed correctly, DTF prints can last 40, 50 or more washes. I will be doing wash tests on these and updating you guys as to how they're holding up. And I will be reporting my findings over on my TikTok. So make sure to follow me there at Neko underscore prints. So my final verdict, white toner or DTF. That would depend. Are you printing them yourself or are you just purchasing the transfers? If you're just purchasing the transfers, hands down DTF transfers. They feel great, they last long, and the colors are on point. No hate to white toner transfers, but the durability is just not there for me and the feel is just so much better on the DTF that it's it's a no-brainer for me. DTF prints over white toner prints. Now, if you wanna make the prints yourself, that would be up to you. Are you okay with doing the maintenance on a DTF printer? Are you okay with doing the maintenance on a DTG printer? Are you okay with the price point on the DTF or DTG printer? Do you have the space for a DTF printer? If you answered yes to all of those questions, then hands down, go the DTF route. But what if you don't have the time or the patience or the technical know-how to be doing all that maintenance? What if you just want a printer that can print full color, and just sit there for whenever you need it without having to do daily cleanings on it or daily nozzle checks. Pretty much just not having to think of the printer until you need to use it. Then you wanna go the white toner route. Honestly, white toner 
even though it doesn't last as long and the toner itself and everything can get pretty pricey the toner does last a long time it's lasted a lot longer so far than the white ink on my ttg printer the white toner printer honestly i think is it, it's fantastic it's a really good printer it's great for when you want to do one-offs if somebody needs a couple of shirts for a birthday or for halloween and gathering for one-offs white toners are fantastic it all depends on your current situation and where you see your business going so i'm curious to hear your thoughts on it do you prefer white toner or do you prefer DTF? Do you mind the maintenance on it? Or do you just want a printer that'll just sit there until you need to use it? Let me know down in the comments below. Hopefully I was able to answer most of the questions that you guys had regarding white toner versus DTF prints. And if you found this video helpful, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that like button. As always, it tremendously helps the channel and it helps me. Huge thank you from me and Inosuke for watching and catch you guys next time. Peace.